Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, delete where applicable. I'm Sam and I'm here to answer some more of your mother factor questions to your mother factor eyes, ears and faces. After the rip-roaring success of last week's question, God look at that magnificent beast go in action, I thought I'd give it another go this week. So, first off, Cody Knight inquires, do you have a porn video? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Don't search for it. Josh G underscore NL postulates, I always wondered what happened between you and Jennifer Lawrence. More like what hasn't happened between us. Am I right? Certainly not a court case for a restraining order or anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen. Superfire Games exclaimed, I've always wondered why Clive keeps coming back no matter how many times you fire him. It's mainly because I feel sorry for him, really. I mean, sure, he colossally messes up at almost every task you give him with such vigor, it's actually impressive. But after you've fired a man and you see him debating himself by begging for crisps wearing a leotard and a skip, then you just have to do the right thing, you know? Give something back to the community. But the main question this week comes from the mysterious sounding anonymous one who enigmatically postulates, I've always wondered. Why food that's bad for us tastes so much better than healthy food? Oh, sorry about that. I'm just enjoying this uh, lovely beef disc with a cheese flavoured slice between the two bits of bread. Do excuse me. Mm. Mm. There's loads of stuff in food that's bad for us, including salt and an innate sense of shame. But let's focus on the two big high scorers, fat and sugar. These are the things that make some lovely, lovely stuff into guilty pleasures. Although only food, so not the Venga boys. Fat and sugar have nothing to do with why you love them so much. In our brain boxes, there's a little chemical called dopamine, which, like Bustin does for Ray Parker Jr. or the scent of the pine does for Nina Simone and Muse, makes us feel good. It's a reward that our brain likes to give us, like our brain giving us a cookie for having a cookie, if that makes sense. Sugar quite literally makes us feel happy. But what about fat? Well, our tongue has receptors on it that can pick up many things, one of which is fat. That's right, our clever tongues, when not being stuck out in emoji form, can actually tell the difference between fat and non-fat, and boy does it like it. Fat can also make other flavours in food taste better and make the taste last longer, as certain flavours like to stick to flat... flat molecules? Fat molecules. It can also tell when it's some sort of fat substitute, or fatstitute, although that sounds like something you'd find a leaflet for by a public payphone. So we're getting a lot of what we like with fatty and sugary, aka fun, stuff, but why do we like it? Ah, come on. For one potential answer to this, we need to look back at our long, 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 long lost cousin ancestor, Ugg. Not the boots, I mean Ugg. This is Ugg here. Well, I'm sorry he looks similar to you, Clive. Maybe if he had a bath once in a while, we wouldn't be in this mess. You stink, Jesus. <sighs> Anywho. According to psychologist Dr. Lee Gibson, pictured here having a cup of tea with some sort of technological edger sketch, back when Ugg was around, he would look for food wherever he could get it. But while leaves were all very well and good, Ugg would prefer meals high in fat and sugar, like lasagna or bionetta. Did those things exist back then? No? God, no wonder they were so miserable all the time. Anyway, they want that lovely stuff because it gives them energy and acts like a survival mechanism against the elements and other threats like bears. And they basically need it for their survival. They probably need it as well for those, you know, those cars they used to have back then that they used to, had to use for their feet. You know, the ones, that, you know, in that documentary, The Flintstones. Yeah, like those. Hello, you alright? So we've evolved to purposely seek out high sugar and high fat foods and for our brains to give us a nice gooey feeling when we eat them. Ew, wording. It should also be mentioned that food companies invest loads and loads and loads of pennies into creating chemicals to put in our food to appeal to our innate love of fat and sugar, according to journalist Michael Moss. So, even though our brains are programmed to love this stuff, fast food companies still add chemicals in it to make us want it more, so that burgers and chalky bars are pretty much begging to be eaten in our eyes. Please, please eat me, please, please eat me. So we can't help it. So there you go. If you want a question answered next week, then remember to comment below, starting with, I've always wondered, chin stroking optional, to get it answered the living heck out of lovely stuff. Till then, c'est la vie, mother factors. Oh, there we go. I'm not gonna stop eating it now. I mean, yeah, everything I just said means I shouldn't, but 
Been the hunter gatherer, mate. Hunter gatherer. I'm, I'm gonna be finding it, so saber tooth tigers and stuff. More like what hasn't happened between me and Lor. <sighs> me and Lawrence. Who the f is Lawrence? Hmm. Wrong fluff. <laughs> Loincloth. 